Hey, everybody. Welcome to Sens Nation. Just dropping in today to forget Jason Spezza ever existed. That's right. 11-year man with the Ottawa Senators. What did he play? 686 games, 56 playoff games. Top line minutes, big money. Toronto, he played three years there, 183 games, 17 playoff games. Depth player playing for minimum wage. I mean, we should have known his true allegiance when he's playing minimum wage for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Should have known his true allegiance when he said he'd retire rather than allow himself to be claimed off waivers from some other team. We should have known all these things. But it was put to bed today. As he retires from the NHL and immediately joins the evil empire, the Toronto Maple Leafs, take him on as some sort of special assistant to Kyle Dubas, the GM there. This mucks up everything when you think about it. I even think about that Spezza deal as one of the great trades in Sens history. No, I can't even think that way. It's, it's clearly Eric Carlson. Zidane Chara did his bit to muck up that great trade with the Islanders. If you remember, Alexi Yashin was here. And being a bit of a malcontent, not going to lie. Uh, and the Sens finally traded Alexi Yashin, who's probably a bit underrated as a senator. Let's be honest. Most people think of negatively about Alexi Yashin. He's still one of your top five guys in NHL history for the Sens. Guy's the only Hart Trophy candidate the club has ever had. But we're all getting sick of his act. So they trade him to the Islanders. In return, they get Zidane Chara and they get the second overall draft pick from 2001, and that would be Jason Spezza. We all go, hmm, what a trade. What a slam dunk. And it still is a great trade, don't get me wrong. But this takes the edge off it. Zidane Chara running screaming from town in 06 to join the Boston Bruins as a free agent. That was disconcerting, but the trade still was pretty good. And now Spezza goes over to the evil empire. Kind of wrecks that trade when you think about it. Remember that crazy move he pulled on Sheldon Sure when he was with the Montreal Canadiens? Winning goal, just undresses Sure, buries it. I think Theodore was in nets at that stage of the game. I remember all that so vividly, but today I just feel like I'm Sheldon Sure as a Sens fan. And Spezza's done that to me. You've gone to the dark side, Jason. You've gone to the dark side. So do I have great memories of Jason Spezza? I definitely think I do, but they're all gone now. And now that he's declared his true allegiance, I've turned my Spezza memory stick over to a buddy of mine who's a Leaf fan because turnover is part of my game as well. All right, moving on. What the hell was that with Team Canada yesterday? Canada falls in the World Hockey Championship final to the mighty Finns, the host Finns. And how does the Finns have like 5.5 million people as a population? And somehow, some way, there you're defending reigning Olympic champions and world hockey champions. Like, that makes no sense. 30, what do we have, 35 million in Canada? What are my stats, Canada? Get off my back. But the Finns found a way. They went 4-3 over Canada in overtime at the World Hockey Championship gold medal game. Canada has to settle for silver. That's always the thing about these international events. It's cool to get a gold, silver, and bronze. But it's the silver medalist that's really the only loser. You lose your last game. You could have won gold, but you get silver, so you lost. Meanwhile, the bronze medalists, who are, well, they're a tier below the silver medalists, and they are happy as all get out. Anyway, the refereeing was astonishingly poor. I'm not one to complain about the refing. No, wait, yeah, I, I kind of am. But that was uniquely bad. Can we agree on that? First, you had Cole Sillinger. As the Canadians led one nothing. Cole Sillinger lifts a guy's stick, and it's his own stick that hits himself in the face. So they get, uh, they get some, they get, I think they got a two minute minor. They get a two minute minor for high sticking. And because it was a minor, it wasn't something they could review in international hockey rules. Okay. And then later, that incredible play in overtime, Thomas Shabbat. Yeah, he probably shouldn't have had his stick blade in and around the Finn players' skates. That's definitely an error, but what a dive. Oh my God. The Finnish player dives, and then that sets up a power play, and then the Finns win it in OT. Very frustrating stuff. It's funny how a lot of years I don't care about the World Hockey Championship, but when Canada's in the gold medal game, it's always kind of interesting. Last year was amazing with Connor Brown setting up Nick Paul for the game winner to win it all in OT against those same Finns. Well, the Finns get their revenge this time around, and uh, I'm actually surprised at how annoyed that I am because it seemed like the Canadians were a team of destiny. The way they finished off that quarterfinal, Drake Batherson scoring in overtime, and just like the gold medal game, 
Canadians are down 3-1 very late and miraculously end up uh, tying and then winning, but gold medal game, it didn't go their way. So the long and short of it today is that I'm angry at everything. I'm angry about Jason Spezza, and I'm angry about Team Canada losing in the gold medal game in such an obnoxious way. So I just thought I'd check in with you and, uh, and see how you're making out with all of it. Don't forget to drop us a note anytime you like. If you have any feedback, Sends Nation Hockey at Outlook.com. The website is SendsNationHockey.com. We invite you to listen to our podcast with myself and the coach, Greg Kennedy. And that's all I got for today. We'll talk to you next time.